Hey everyone, you already know that the x and y coordinates of the unit circle at any given angle denote the cosine and sine ratios of the angle. You also know that the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate gives the tangent ratios of that same angle. In this video, you will learn another way of looking at the tangent ratio and discover how that translates into the graph of y equals tan x. So, starting with the unit circle, I can drop the vertical and construct a right triangle. Consider how the tangent ratio is changing as the angle increases in quadrant 1. When I first start, the tangent ratio, or opposite divided by the adjacent, is going to be less than 1. Why? Because the opposite side has a smaller dimension than the adjacent side. So when you have a smaller number divided by the larger number, that's going to be less than 1. As I move towards 45 degrees, the opposite side and adjacent side are now pretty much equal in length, and so the ratio of opposite over adjacent is now equal to approximately 1. As I continue to rotate the angle past 45 degrees, now the opposite side is much greater than the adjacent side, and so now I'm moving into uh, values of tangent that is that are greater than 1. And then as I keep inching towards 90 degrees, I will end up with greater and greater values of the tangent ratio. Here's another way of looking at it. I can extend the endpoint of the radius beyond the unit circle and construct a vertical from that extended point down to 1, 0. These two triangles, the larger one that extends outside of the unit circle and the original one that's inside the unit circle, are considered similar, which means their lengths are proportional to each other. We now have a very easy way to interpret the tangent ratio. Before, we would have to think about two dimensions to determine the tangent ratio. Opposite over adjacent or height divided by base. Now because the base length of the larger triangle is 1, and remember this triangle is proportional to the one inside the unit circle, we only have to look at the height of the larger triangle to know what the tangent ratio is. right? Because the opposite side of the larger triangle uh, divided by the adjacent side, well the adjacent side is equal to 1, so opposite over 1 is just opposite. Therefore the height of the larger triangle is precisely the tangent ratio of the angle. So as the angle increases in quadrant 1, the ratio gets larger and larger as indicated by the height of this triangle. Watch what happens as we enter subsequent quadrants. First you'll notice that the similar triangle is now graphed in the lower right hand corner of the coordinate plane. Well that's because we expect to have negative values of the tangent ratio in quadrant 2. So the height of the triangle, quote unquote height, is considered negative. Now, when we first enter quadrant 2, so here we are just first entering quadrant 2, um, the tangent ratio is a large negative number because the height far exceeds the, the length of the base in magnitude. As the angle increases through this quadrant, however, you can see that the height now is diminishing and the uh, base is now increasing. Now, you can also look at the fact that the height of this uh, similar triangle is decreasing as well. So I start with something that's, in fact, we could probably zoom out a bit. Okay, so the height of this triangle and the fact that it dips below the x-axis indicates that the tangent ratio is a large negative when I first enter the second quadrant. Then as I move through the second quadrant, the height of the larger triangle diminishes, indicating that the tangent ratio is getting closer and closer to zero. Okay, the same sort of thing happens as I move to quadrant 3, into quadrant 3. Now I'm back into a quadrant where I expect uh, positive values for a tangent, uh, to, for the tangent of those angles. And so again, I can look at the height of the uh, similar triangle to gauge what the value of the tangent ratio is. So it's getting really, really positive as I move towards 270 degrees. And then as I move past 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2 radians, now what's happening is I go from large, large negative values of the tan ratio to smaller and smaller values. Okay, and then the cycle repeats. Okay, one thing, speaking of the cycle repeating, is to consider what the pattern is of the tangent ratios as you move around the unit circle. So we're starting with small positive tan ratios that moves towards large values, large positive values. Then large negative values down to small negative values. 
And we've only rotated halfway around, but that cycle now repeats. Again, when we enter quadrant 3, we have small positive values of tangent ratio, and then moves towards large positive values, and then finally in quadrant 4, large negative values. Oh, sorry. Let's go and uh, large negative values down to small negative values. Okay? Now, let's take a look at what this all means for our graph of y equals 10x. So what I want to do first is zoom out a little bit so that we can see exactly what's happening here. Okay, so we do know that we're going to go from small positives to large positives, then large negatives to small negatives, and then that cycle is going to repeat. So let's see that. Let's see exactly how that happens. Uh, I'm going to convert the x-axis into radians. Okay, so we can see how this happens. All right. So as I start to uh, rotate uh, in the first quadrant, you can see that tan is increasing, right? So opposite over adjacent, or you can barely see, maybe I should zoom in a little bit. You can see that the green line I've left there to represent the height of that larger triangle. So whatever the height of the larger triangle is, that's equivalent to what the tan is. And again, I'm graphing the, the value of tan versus the angle. Okay, so I'm at about pi over six right now. So at pi over six, uh, I've got a tan ratio of approximately 0.5. Okay, and as I keep moving and moving and moving in the first quadrant, that tan ratio just increases towards larger and larger positive values. Now, as I go into the second quadrant, remember the second quadrant, according to Castrol, tan is negative, and it's very, very, um, it's a very negative number. So here I am down here very negative, and as I continue, I'm getting into smaller negatives. So I'm still negative, but it's closer to zero, and then finally at pi over two, it actually hits zero. Okay, continuing on, the cycle repeats, I get very positive, and then from negatives, I get less and less negative. And then the cycle continues and continues. So that is the graph of tan x. And you'll notice that the cycle repeats a little bit more often than uh, for the graphs of sine or cosine x. The last thing to note here is that tangent is undefined periodically, right? At pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, and we know this from our knowledge of the unit circle. The tangent of pi over 2 would be the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate here would be 1 divided by the x-coordinate 0. That would be undefined. So graphically speaking, how we represent something that is undefined is with a vertical asymptote. Okay, so vertical asymptotes on the graph of y equals tan x appear at x equals pi over 2, x equals 3 pi over 2, and x equals 5 pi over 2, and basically every half turn of the unit circle after that. So that is the graph of y equals tan x, and you just learned how it relates to the unit circle.